So you want to improve the ranking of your products on Etsy search. Frankly, who doesn't? Uh, one of the important things that you need to take into account is something called your listing quality score. So that is what I want to talk about in today's video. I want to talk about strategies to improve your listing quality score and what goes into the listing quality score anyway. G'day there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess Van Den. I have been selling successfully on Etsy since 2008. I've been full-time with my handmade business since 2010. It is called Ethereal. You can check it out via the links below in my description. And today I want to touch on a very important part of the Etsy search algorithm puzzle called the listing quality score. So this impacts where your product ranks in Etsy search. It's how good your listing is basically, and that will make mean that Etsy will put it higher in the search rankings and it will show it to more people. So there's two parts to your positioning in Etsy search. The first part's query matching and the second part is ranking. So this is part of the second part, which is the ranking part of the story. I have done another video recently where I talked about all of the aspects of Etsy search and all of the things that go into your Etsy search algorithms. I do mention listing quality score and talk about it a bit in that video, but I want to go into it in more depth today. If you're interested in that one, I'll put a card to it up here and you can watch it uh, in another win, open it another window or save it and come back and watch that one later. So basically your listing quality score is how popular your listing is with people looking in Etsy search. So it's based on the activity of potential buyers and buyers who have found you via Etsy search. So the things that the algorithm takes into account when it comes to ranking your listing or your listing quality score are how many people have favorited your items, how many people have clicked on your items in search, and how many people have actually bought your items. Okay. So those are the aspects of listing quality score. So long story short, the more people favorite your item, the higher the listing quality score, the more people who click on your item, the higher your listing quality score. And very importantly, the number of people who purchase your item increases your listing quality score. Now, of course, this last one is dependent on having a reproducible or a renewable product. So this is a sort of product like all of my products, my earrings that I'm wearing, my rings, they're all reproducible products. Basically I list it once and then when it sells, it just relists and it relists and relists and relists. And every time somebody buys it, I make a new one and send it out to them. So this is the strategy I do suggest you focus on when it comes to selling on Etsy because of this. Uh, I actually have a video where I talked about how I've made $65,000 selling one product over and over again. I'll put a card to that up here on Etsy only. Uh, and that's because it's a renewable product and it just keeps selling over and over again. Now you might be asking or thinking, Jess, I do one of a kind or vintage. How does this work for me? What Etsy says is that in that case, they take into account the listing quality of your previous items. So items that you have sold previously or that have been in your shop previously, it actually uses the listing quality score of those items to basically inform the listing quality score of this new item. So when you open a shop on Etsy, you have a, a neutral shop quality score. And when you upload a listing to Etsy, it has a neutral listing quality score. So what that tells you is that your listing quality score can actually be a negative or a positive. Otherwise they wouldn't say neutral. So you want to make sure that, you know, your shop overall is behaving well and your listings overall, if you're in that circumstance, because it's going to impact the quality listing quality of your new uh, items that you add to your shop. So another thing to note is that when you uh, add a new listing to Etsy, it actually gets a short, small bump in search. So it will be shown higher in search because Etsy wants to quickly learn what people are thinking about this item. Okay. So this is the story behind recency being a part of uh, where you actually rank in Etsy search. So the more recently an item has been added, the higher it will rank in Etsy. Again, they don't tell us exactly how much <laughs> or exactly how much of a bump. It's just a little bump 
in search. So just be aware of that, that new things will probably get a flurry of attention because they've, they've been, um, kind of perhaps artificially bumped up in the search and then they will eventually settle to wherever they're naturally going to be in the rankings, depending on all the other aspects. So that's the, the kind of thoughts behind listing and relisting stuff is that you get that little bump, bump in search. So what you want to do here, the best thing you can do, obviously, is make sure that your all your query matching stuff is correct. That's your titles, tags, attributes. Again, I talk about that in the other video. I won't go into it now. But you want to focus on conversion as well, because the more favorites and more purchases and click throughs you get, the higher your item is listing quality score is going to be and therefore the higher it's going to rank in the Etsy searches that it shows up in. So how can we improve conversion rates? That is where things like your photos, your description, but mostly your photos <laughs> come into play and your price and your shipping price. All of those things uh, are going to affect conversion. Also your shop itself, like your uh, reviews, how many five star reviews you have, um, how well fleshed out your shop is, how trustworthy you are. All of those things go into conversions because they all go into the no like and trust factor when it comes to people deciding to buy from you. But within the listing itself, what you want to focus on is having excellent photos. So that, that first photo that people see in search has to be it has to be amazing. It has to be so good that people want to click through and find out more about that product. So that is the most important photo. Then you want to make sure all of your um, extra photos tell the story of the product and answer any questions people might have about the product. Okay. Uh, I've got another video where I go into the seven types of photos you should have in your listing. I'll put a card to that here. But basically you want to show um, your photo in use, yeah, sorry, your item in use. You want to show a scale picture that shows, you know, how big or small it is. You want to show all sides of it. You know, if you've got a selling a bag, show us what it looks like on the inside, please. <laughs> please tell me, please show me that. Um, things like that. And also you want to take advantage of that photo spot. Um, you could put a photo of you making, you could use a spot to actually put any information about the product. This is especially useful these days because people often don't expand and read the description. So if you've got crucial information people need to know, make a picture image with text on it that explains that information so they won't miss it. Uh, you can use a listing video these days as well. So a 15 second video that shows your item being used or just being moved around or you making the item. And again, that's more likely to increase your conversion rate because people are more likely to want the item because you've shown something more about it. And same goes with your description. Um, I don't think descriptions are as important or these days, you know, people tend to buy based on the photos and the videos, but do make sure you've got all the relevant information in there. Again, remember you want to answer any potential question your customer has about that item. So they don't have to spend time messaging you because nine times out of 10, they won't bother. They'll just go find someone else who has all the information in the description that they need to know and they'll buy from them. So you want to work on all of those things in order to increase your conversion. Again, also pricing and shipping. Think about is your pricing in line with what it needs to be? Uh, is it competitive, but not a race to the bottom. We can't do that in handmade or everybody loses. Don't undercharge, uh, sorry, don't underprice stuff just to get the sale because in the long run, you won't be making a profit and your business won't be sustainable. Also think about the shipping. Um, again, another aspect of your ranking is whether you offer the free shipping guarantee or not in the US, you know, that will affect it to a certain point. And also just buyer psychology, you know, people tend to prefer to buy things that are free shipping, although you and I know there's nothing free in this world uh, because you've put the shipping cost into your product price. Those are all aspects that you need to consider when it comes to increasing your conversion rate, because again, the more people buy that product, the high, it's like a positive upward spiral. I've said this before, I'll say it again, the positive upward spiral of your stuff ranking higher in search, pe more people favoring it, clicking it, buying it ranks higher in search. This is why you'll tend to find you have like hero products in your shop that do really, really well. 
And then you might have a bunch of products that almost never sell, never sell or only sell occasionally because those ones are doing really well. And they, the more they do well, the better they do. <laughs> so it's kind of, you know, a catch 22, I guess, in a way. And that you want to focus on working on the products that aren't doing so well and see if you can start improving their listing quality scores so that they too will start that nice positive upward spiral in Etsy search, be found, clicked on, favorited and bought by more people. So I hope that helps you. If it did, give me a big thumbs up. Let me know any questions or comments below as well. And of course, as I stressed in today's video, one of the most important things you need to work on, even before I think personally, before you worry and spend so much time on your SEO, like your titles and tags and so on and so forth, is your photos. Because you can have the best titles, tags and attributes in the world, the best keywords, you can be targeted as heck. But if your photos are terrible, no one will click on your item and nobody will buy it. So your photos really are that important. I'm going to leave you here with a video about how to improve your product photography if you need a little bit of help with that. I hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you spending some time with me today. I'll catch you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Bye for now.